Coming up on Mountain News this morning, an Eastern Kentucky Vocational Center holds a training exercise to prepare staff members for potential active shooter situations. And the story of a missing Kentucky man, well, it ends with a very happy ending. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning to you, 532 on this Thursday morning. I'm Dakota Makers, and boy, Brandon, I think this heat has sort of made the week go by faster because we're just wanting it to just end, I guess. Yeah, yes. so <laughs> I think, I mean, normally, I, I normally think the weeks go by slowly, but it's already Thursday, and really, I think the heat from when I did my live shots, was it Tuesday, I think? I, I think, think so, yes. I think it's still getting to me. Yes, so. exactly. So hopefully <laughs> after today, we'll get a break in the heat, yeah. at least briefly. Uh, cold front moves in tomorrow. Not a whole lot of rain with it, but some colder air. But we could see some of those storms tomorrow pack a little bit of a punch. Let's talk about today first. Pikeville, US 119, US 23. Not too much going on over there. One, uh, I, I call them bread trucks. I don't know if that's what they're actually called, but one of those uh, kind of trucks over there stopped at the red light, but uh, not too much traffic out there this morning. 66 in Clintwood, a lot of 70s across the board, low to mid 70s, but a couple of spots there that are above that. Pikeville and Prestonsburg are at six, or excuse me, 76. Moorhead's at 79, and Jackson is at 75. That's some of the warmest spots in our region. A few places a little bit colder than yesterday. Some spots a little bit warmer, like out towards Somerset, London, and Wise, all two degrees warmer. Moorhead is four degrees warmer this morning. And again, some spots a little colder, like Harlan, Jonesville, and Hazard, a couple degrees colder, colder this morning. Sunrise, 611, sunset, 857. I do believe you'll see both those today, and you're going to see some heat as we heat back up into record-breaking ter uh, territory there. 95, if we make it. We got to beat 91. That's the record at the Weather Service Office of Jackson. London Corbett Airport is 93. Dakota? All right, Brennan, thank you. Well, a toddler has died after drowning in a pool Wednesday morning in Laurel County. Deputies said the child was nearly two years old. This is the second drowning in Laurel County this year. Well, the CDC says drownings are the second leading cause of unintentional injury death for children ages 1 to 14 years old. Well, Chad Hedrick talked with first responders about the tragic situation. It's a tragedy that happens nearly 4,000 times a year and most commonly in children. It's definitely unimaginable. Um, kids can get away just, just if you blink. They're, they're 30 feet off the other direction out of your reach. Deputies say the 23-month-old was found in a pool in the western part of Laurel County around 10 a.m. Wednesday. The child was taken to the hospital where ER doctors tried to revive them, but the toddler did not survive. The rescue squad had a unit that was close by who also happens to be a paramedic and he started doing CPR. They were able to get a pulse back on the child for some time. Then at the hospital, they were doing a pulse check and it came back negative. According to the CDC, among infants, two thirds of drownings happen in bathtubs. In one to four year olds, home swimming pools are the leading cause and more than half of drownings in people 15 and older happen in lakes, rivers and oceans. There's a lot of guilt that goes along with that. Um, sort of the, if I had just been paying more attention mentality comes to mind and that is probably the hardest thing that the parent has to go through is that they feel like it's their fault. First responders say anytime your child goes missing and you have a pool, that should be the first place you look. The CDC says it can happen in seconds. Chad Hedrick, WIMT Mountain News. From 2015 to 2019, the nationwide death rate for drowning was 1.23 per capita. In Kentucky, the rate was 1.45. Kentucky State Police say an intoxicated man in Pike County stole a pickup truck and led police on a chase before he was ultimately arrested. Shortly before noon yesterday, Pikeville PD officers attempted to stop 51-year-old James Rife of Taswell County, Virginia. An arrest citation says Rife then fled through the Cedar Creek community into the Hurricane community before police used stop sticks, ending the chase along US 23 near Coal Run. Kentucky State Police investigators from Frankfurt later arrived at the scene to investigate a shooting in connection to the chase, but we're unable to give any other details as it is still under investigation. Well, he is being charged with a host of different charges. One man is facing stabbing charges following an incident that happened early Wednesday morning over in Bell County. Just before 430 yesterday morning, officers with the Middlesboro Police Department were called to a home in the Hinks High area. When they arrived, police say they found a man with a knife in his stomach. 
While investigating, 29-year-old Edward Christopher Horn was determined to be the suspect. Officers found Horn near the Happy Hollow Apartments. Police say during their conversation, he admitted to stabbing the other man. The victim, whose name was not released, was taken to Middlesboro ARH. His condition has also not been released at this time. Today, a hearing is scheduled in the murder case against Nicholas Rucker. The motion is to dismiss the case entirely. Rucker is accused of killing his girlfriend in 2019 and also accused of trying to escape from the Whitley County Detention Center earlier this year. That hearing is set for 11 a.m. in Whitley Circuit Court. Well, it is a situation that no one thinks will happen to them. But in order to be prepared for an active shooter, those at the Carl D. Perkins Vocational Training Center hosted training sessions for staff at their facility Wednesday. It was facilitated by the Johnson County Sheriff's Office, who taught people about the different, the different types of active shootings, the possible motives of a shooter, and the best course of action to take when dealing with this scenario. You know, you, you'd have heard of some, you know, some things like that going on, but but it just wasn't anything you you would think it would happen in your area. And then as time progressed, uh, you know, we've seen it. Hey, we're we're vulnerable too. I mean, it, it can happen anywhere at any time. Officials say every school, workplace, or organization could benefit from similar training. Well, we have a very happy ending in the story of a missing Whitley County man, Daryl Carter. Officials with the London Laurel Rescue Squad say Carter was found alive Wednesday evening. Hey, all, he'd been missing since Sunday. Carter was found by a farmer checking his fields about one mile outside of the search area. He is, was dehydrated, had some cuts and bruises, but overall, he was in good shape. We're happy to report that. Two teens are safe after getting lost on a hike in extreme heat in Powell County. The search and rescue team says two 17-year-olds got lost off the Double Arch Trail around 5.35 Tuesday evening. By 9.45, crews were close enough to hear the hikers and make their way to them. Powell County Search and Rescue says the two had made a, long, a wrong turn along the way. The teens cut through branches and bush for two hours before calling 911. Crews are reminding people to always bring a paper map and plenty of water when you're going hiking. Well, we're back. The redneck rave is roaring into Kentucky despite some negative international publicity in the past. Sarah Walters has the story. It'll be mud pits and mayhem in Edmondson County this weekend. The redneck rave is back in town. It's a week-long party full of mud, music, and mayhem where people from all over the country, we gather here and we have a little shindig. The rave is set to be an action-packed weekend. A Friday is kind of when the festivities start, so we'll do some drag races, we'll do some mud runs, you know, we'll get the mud pit going, all that good stuff. Uh, lots of trail riding and stuff like that. But yeah, and then Saturday night is our big day, which we do our concerts and stuff like that, so we have a lot of cool bands coming in. I never say who's coming because I just let the people, they, they sort of talk amongst themselves. When asked why he chose the word redneck, given the connotations, organizer Justin Stowers said he has a different meaning. So I feel like the word redneck, uh, some people see it as another way, but I see it as a bunch of good old boys and girls that like to have fun and they like to party. And as long as you're, you're an honest person, uh, then they're, they're honest back and they show you love. And, you know, that's, that's what it is, man. Redneck rave has gained international publicity due to widespread drug use and injuries that have happened in the past, including a partier getting impaled two years prior. We don't force anybody to come here, and at the end of the day, the people that are coming here, they they know the risks. You know, like when you're dealing with a bunch of these machines, and you know you're flying, you're going 50 mile an hour in a trail, and all that kind of stuff. You know, accidents unfortunately do happen, but at the end of the day, we're making sure that we're there in a in a prompt, you know, mannered time, and that way we can make sure those people get out safe if they, you know, God forbid, they do get injured. Even without the risk of injury, many worry about the festivities taking place in the high temperatures as a heat wave continues to push through Kentucky. We literally have a truck full of bottles of water this time. So uh, this is probably the hottest one we're ever going to do. I mean, you know, right now up to up to this date. But uh, we feel like, you know, just being hydrated is a, is a super key. It's like a very, very important thing this weekend. Stowers assure that the event will be safe with EMS at the ready for any and all injuries. He also assured that all are welcome, so long as you're there for a good time. The only thing that matters is if you're coming here to have a good time and party, make new friends and all that kind of stuff, then everyone here is going to, you know, welcome you with open arms.
Well, just had this morning, one of the Kardashian sisters is in the spotlight after being accused of damaging a historic dress. That's on the way next. We've been through a stretch of record-breaking temperatures this week, but can we do it one more time? I'll have the answer in about three minutes.